Hello, everyone, and welcome to week 25 of MSK Unknown Case Series. I absolutely love this case, so let's go ahead and get started. I'm showing you three MRI images through the thigh. We have a T1 weighted image on the left. In the middle, we have a T2 weighted image. And on the right, we have a T1 fat sat post contrast image. There's obviously a lesion within the fastest lateralis muscle. And based on these imaging findings, the question I have for you guys is, in this patient with known fibrous dysplasia and the MRI shown, the most likely diagnosis is what? Is this a case of Klippel, Trenonai, Weber syndrome? Is this McEwen Albright syndrome? Is this Mazabrod syndrome? Or is this Jaffe Campanacci syndrome? Based on the images and the history of fibrous dysplasia that you see here. So of course, the answer here is going to be Mazabrod syndrome, and I'll explain why. So here we have a T1 iso-intense or hypo-intense, the muscle lesion. That's fairly well-defined. It's pretty much light bulb bright on T2, almost looks cystic, but then when we give contrast, there's some heterogeneous contrast enhancement here. So anytime you have a lesion here that's T1 dark, T2 bright, has enhancement, your differential should really be some sort of sarcoma, nerve sheath tumor, or intramuscular myxoma. And a clue that this is an intramuscular myxoma is that it's light bulb bright on T2, and there's a little bit of a rim of fat around some part of the lesion. Oftentimes a myxoma can have a rim of fat or this bright signal along either the superior or the inferior margin. And the inferiorly, we don't see it, but superiorly, we do see a small rim of fat here. So myxomas plus fibrous dysplasia is seen in the setting of Mazabrod syndrome, right? Clipal, Trinonite, Weber syndrome is when you have bony and soft tissue hypertrophy, you have varicose veins and you have a cutaneous hemangioma, right? Not a myxoma, but a hemangioma. McCune Albright syndrome is when you have precocious puberty, you have cafe au lait spots, right? And you get fibrous dysplasia. So there would be fibrous dysplasia, but you'd have precocious puberty and cafe au lait spots. And Jaffe Campanacci is when you have multiple non ossifying fibromas, right? And you can also have cafe au lait spots in the skin, okay? So this is a nice example of what Mazabrod syndrome would look like. Now, this was a case of a soft tissue myxoma based on the MRI. This of course is a benign soft tissue mass made up of myxoid stroma. That's why on T2, it's extremely bright, almost looks cystic-like. There's no risk of malignant degeneration for a soft tissue myxoma. It's a, benign, uh, it's a benign lesion. Sometimes when you excise them, they can recur very rarely, but there's no malignant potential here. They're usually nearly almost painless in a small percentage of patients. It can present with pain, but they're usually painless lesions that typically are seen within the muscle. And there's a slightly higher preponderance in females, particularly in patients that are between the ages of 40 and 70 years of age, which is when these classically present. And on MRI, typically it's gonna be T1 iso-intense to hypo-intense to muscle. You may have that small rim of fat around the superior or the inferior border of the lesion, as we actually kind of saw here in our case, where superiorly there was, or anteriorly, there was a small rim of fat around the lesion. Typically, they're very bright on T2 because of their myxoid content. And the post-contrast is very variable. I've seen some that have mild to moderate enhancement. Some have almost no enhancement whatsoever, maybe very faint or subtle enhancement. So it can be very variable as well. And of course, we know that a myxoma plus fibrous dysplasia is consistent with Mazabrod syndrome, very high yield for the core exam. And you know, one should just know that, although it's rare to have Mazabrod syndrome, this association is something to keep in mind. Excision is usually curative. Typically, you just do surgical excision and it's cured. There's a very low risk of recurrence, but most of them um, are excised with no problems whatsoever. Thank you so much for your attention. I hope that was a great case. Tune in next week for another super high yield MSK unknown case.